Kim Jong Un news now, and uh, there was a surprise televised New Year's address in North Korea from Kim Jong Un, the first of its kind in North Korea for 19 years. And in his speech, uh, delivered conspicuously without a swivel chair and a hairless cap, despite <laughs> recommendations from his top advisers, he uh, spoke of the need to improve the economy and also to reunify the Koreas, warning that confrontation only led to war. And that's a little bit rich, Andy, coming from someone who has spent the last 12 months conducting rocket tests that have pissed <laughs> off the entire international community and that have been tantamount to him waggling his penis around saying, <laughs> look at this, everybody look at this, I'm pointing my penis at South Korea, look, I'm pointing it at them, nobody can stop me. Ha 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 ha, am I going to fire it? You just don't know, do you? But it's pointing at you. Ha 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 ha, my penis is pointing at you. Ha 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 ha. That's essentially been his behaviour in recent months, Andy. <laughs> You're going to make such a great dad job. <laughs> and time come. Also, he's been getting a bit, uh, bit old school with his leadership as well. I mean, if we've had a, you know, the trillion dollar coin in America, Kim Jong Un's getting even more real than that, John. He has been literally giving candy to children. Uh, one <laughs> kilogram of free candy for every single child in uh -huh. North Korea, which apparently is a tradition started by uh, his grandfather and previous uh, lunatic North Korean uh, leader. Must be something in the genes there. And I mean, people are criticising him for this. To me, it's just basically introducing North Korean children to how adult politics works bribing people with sweet stuff that they don't really need to get them to ignore other stuff. And this happens with many things in childhood. You get a lightened, sanitised version to prepare you for the harsh realities of reality. You know, you, you feed babies with lukewarm whap milk. You know, that's, that's, yeah. that, that's really just a, you know, a sanitised version of beer. You read them stories. Goldilocks, a lesson about mankind's exploitation of the natural kingdom. Sleeping Beauty, a story about how some men will exploit wealthy but vulnerable women for personal gain, even if they've been in a long-term coma. I think I think Kim, Kim Jong Un is he's really just playing the long game with his citizens, John. He's just weaning them on to the way the world works. It was a spectacular plan. This he was, it was to celebrate his birthday on Tuesday, and uh, you know he announced his intention to send this kilo of sweets, basically two point two pounds of candy, little sugar bombs to every dangerously malnourished infant in the country. <laughs> and just to make sure that the sugary goodness reached its destination, he even mobilised aircraft to ensure that each child in the country, aged 10 or under, received the candy gift in time. A radio report by the North Korean Central Broadcasting Station said that villagers in outlying islands exploded with joy at the confectionery airlift. I think exploded in joy might have been... A mistranslation, Andy, because surely they meant to say died of malnutrition. <laughs> and when that candy was delivered, I think the starving villagers would be entirely entitled to react by saying, Oh, so you do know we're here then? <laughs> oh, how about that? I just presume that you weren't aware of our existence and suffering, but it is possible for you to get supplies through to us if you choose to. How about that? <laughs> uh, will we be seeing you again any time soon? What's that? Oh, oh you've already gone. <laughs> Uh, some North Koreans are using uh, his birthday as an opportunity to start bravely mocking him, according to a North Korean news blog, uh, because they are, have become annoyed at some of the other birthday activities uh, planned, such as street cleaning for the leader's birthday and compulsory apple picking days. <laughs> Face it, Andy, this guy knows how to party. <laughs> If you go out with him, you're going to wake up with a stomach full of apples on a very clean street. Uh, <laughs> The mocking is coming from the fact that January the 8th uh, is pronounced in Korean as Ilpal, 1-8. But the Korean word for 18, Sipal, happens to be a homophone of the swear word f***ing. <laughs> so Pyongyang residents have decided to take advantage of this pun, and they are referring to Kim Jong-un's birthday as the f***ing birthday celebrations, <laughs> and compulsory <laughs> apple-picking days as f***ing apple-picking days. <laughs> and uh, possibly even further, referring to Kim Jong-un as f***ing comrade, f***ing <laughs> marshal, or Kim the third. Look, it's early days in terms of mocking their leader, Andy. Sure, it isn't the most sophisticated stuff yet, but they are showing some early good talent there. <laughs> One of the final strange things that has emerged regarding 
North Korea concerns their Twitter account. They often link to weird videos on this Twitter account, including a deserted theme park, a video featuring, featuring soldiers playing the kazoo, <laughs> a cartoon for kids about ants, and a 40-minute long synchronised swimming video. But the Twitter account only follows three people, and it turns out one of them is a 25-year-old investor from Austin, Texas, who has absolutely no idea why they're following him. <laughs> his, his name is Jimmy Dushku. And his profile describes him as just a young guy trying to make the world a better place. And he said of this, bizarre circumstances, people always ask me how it happened, and I honestly can't remember. It started sometime back in 2010. I wasn't initially surprised, but I always try to make friends with people from all different locations and backgrounds. <laughs> so it seems like the North Korean Twitter account is exactly as weird as you'd expect, Andy. <laughs>